Hello, hello. You are listening to Thai Pod episode number 27. And today's episode, my friend, oh goodness, it is going to be so good because we are joined by my actual real life friend. Like we talk on FaceTime. <laughs> that just makes us real, in my opinion. <laughs> Nicole Jones. So before I let her introduce herself, I've just got to give you a little bit of the information. Nicole is a project manager, entrepreneur, investor, philanthropist, and wife. She is incredibly passionate about empowering women to pursue their goals. And she also happens to be the host of a motivational podcast, Mediocre to Masterful. So I already know, friend, you are a podcast listener. So go check her out. And I promise you, by the end of this episode, you're going to be like convinced you're going to be like oh yeah I'm <laughs> going to go check out Nicole hi there thanks for tuning in to Thai pod a podcast crafted by Tiana Thai to help you purify your purpose in business love and life whether you're an entrepreneur dog mom or just getting started you're bound to find value as Tiana dives into meaningful topics each episode so settle in Turn up the volume and welcome your host, Tiana Tai. I've got to take just a quick second to ask you for a serious bit of support. Tie Pod would not be possible without your reviews, your comments, and just all of the positive feedback that we've been receiving so far. So if you haven't already, please go on, hit subscribe to make sure you're not missing out on any of this good and free content, and also be sure to leave a review. You may think that I'm not looking at them, but I swear to you, my friend, I read every single review and it just makes my heart so happy. So if you haven't already done so, Hit pause, leave a review, and then let's get back to the goodness. So without further ado, Nicole, please take the stage, introduce yourself, tell us all about how you ended up being here right now. Talking <laughs> Thank you to us. so much, Tiana. That was awesome. Like you convinced me to check out my podcast. <laughs> <laughs> no. Right, right. I try, I try. (laughs) Thank you. I appreciate it. And thank you for having me on the show today. Um, Like you mentioned, I am like many of your listeners a nine to five entrepreneur. Um, I work by day and entrepreneur by night. So by day, I am a project manager um, at a technology company here in Atlanta, Georgia. And at night, I'm working away at Mediocre to Masterful. Um, And like you mentioned, it's really just a platform to help women operate in their power, be a motivational tool and just just different areas like entrepreneurship, um, finance and wellness. Um, I find those three pillars pretty important, um, not only to myself, but the people who listen also find that very important. So I like to be sure I can use my platform to help other women um, elevate in each of those respective areas. Outside of that, I am married to my equal, Greg, and we're just out here trying to conquer the world and, you know, take over the world every single day, (laughs) whatever that means. Um, But I'm just really excited to be on the show and talk more about, you know, the big topic that we have today in terms of student loan debt and just debt in general. And I'm just really excited to be here. And I'm excited that you and I have continued our relationship, Tiana, because we met last year at an event and it's like we thought we knew each other and it was like kindred spirits like right off the bat Mm -hmm. so I'm like do we know each other (laughs) and went down this entire list and let me things let me tell you I've got to jump in here and tell you because like I've never had that experience in my whole life like I've never felt like I knew somebody and then genuinely did not know them yeah it was (laughs) Like, y'all don't understand, we were actively comparing social media, looking at high schools, looking at churches, because we're both local to Atlanta, and we have no connection. None None whatsoever. It was so interesting. Insane. It was so interesting, but we stayed in touch, so now we know each other, for real. I know. (laughs) And Yeah, now we're actually friends. Yes, for sure, (laughs) but I'm just excited to be on the show and just talk more about um, my journey in terms of just being a nine to five entrepreneur and the debt that I've been able to eliminate. So I'm excited. Yes. So let's just go ahead and dive straight in because, you know, 
any, even us entrepreneurs, many of us do have, we all got some kind of debt, am I right? So whether it's traditional school loans or what have you, this idea of paying off such a huge sum, I'm not even going to spoil the surprise, although I may put it in the title. So maybe the surprise is already spoiled. <laughs> but I just want you to paint the picture for us for like where you started on your, your like, you know, uh, getting rid of that debt, where that journey began, what that looked like. And like, let's just get into the story of it all. Because I know everybody's yes. going to want to hear so, this. So if it's not in the title, I was able to pay off nearly $80,000 of student loan debt. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. That just needs like a moment of silence. And that probably. Yeah. yeah. Moment of silence. Okay. That's it. Wow. <laughs> Y'all. <laughs> Um, and if you are listening, you probably, you know, that probably struck you that probably put a pit in your stomach or you rose your hand and was like, wait, that's me. Like, I need to know more. So, you know, it's, it really was a shift for me. Um, all this stemmed from college, um, literally just undergrad. This is not undergrad and a master's degree. This is literally just undergrad and it's, you know, horrible, but it it is what it is. Um, Started off going off to college, you know, Georgia State University is where I graduated from here in Atlanta. And after college, of course, they give you the, I'm I'm putting this in air quotes, grace period uh, from when you graduate college and then have to pay off this debt. (laughs) Um, But during that time, and then when the actual debt actually kicked in, I was in a career, like out of college, thankfully, um, I was able to get a job a few months after college, um, working here in downtown. But I wasn't paying that loan off the way that I should be. I was paying like maybe a couple bucks, throwing a couple bucks here and there, which which was unfortunate on my part because then that just ballooned the interest and the total principal of the loan because I was just not making the payments that I should have. Um, and it's definitely something to celebrate paying off 80K. And it was at the time when I first was, you know, this loan first kicked in, it just felt daunting. It felt overwhelming. It felt like this would never, ever end. And, you know, being young at the time, you know, young 20, 23 at the time, um, I thought I was going to pay this until like in my retirement years. Um, on top of that, it wasn't just mm. the debt from the student loan, I also just was bad at managing money overall. So not only was I paying off student loan debt that was nearly $80,000, but I was also trying during this time frame, trying to figure out how do I best manage money? How can I say I want to work in this career and I want to eventually be an entrepreneur and not really understand how to manage money overall? So it's definitely been um, a process. Um, If you've been to my page already, you've probably seen those debt-free balloon arch in my office that I've taken a million pictures in front of, and it'll probably remain there until the end of the year (laughs) because it is a huge feat. Like this is no small feat. It's not easy, um, but it is attainable. And and that's why I'm on the show today to just to kind of share more of what that looks like and what that means. Oh my goodness. Like I I actually can't even process what that must feel like. It sounds (laughs) incredible. It's one of those things where just like, what must that even feel like? I would never take those freaking balloons <laughs> down, okay? <laughs> so I actually wasn't planning on asking you this, but my interest, like my curiosity got piqued a little bit here. But you're an entrepreneur, right? And I understand that you work your corporate job and you've got the nine to five, but you're also balancing being an entrepreneur. And I'm just wondering, like, from your perspective, was there any unique kind of like financial side effects of balancing like this kind of startup entrepreneur culture, but also trying to manage your money Mm. wisely and pay off all this debt. Is there any story in that? Because for me, it's really easy to convince yourself that you need a lot of things as an entrepreneur. So I'm just curious on your perspective. No, that is a great question. And and as you just shared is what I thought during the time. Like I knew I was in my career, but I also knew that I wasn't managing my money too well and that I was trying to fix that. But I also knew Mm -hmm. that I wanted to be an entrepreneur and I wanted to do entrepreneurial things. And I wanted to start a podcast and, you know, attempted at a few other things before I landed on um, Mediocre to Masterful as my platform. 
But at that time, I did have the thought that there's no way I can be an entrepreneur if I don't have X amount of dollars put aside. There's no way I can be an entrepreneur if Mm I um, don't invest and contribute and purchase this particular course. Like there were so many things that I kept telling myself um, that I needed in order to be an entrepreneur. And at the time, and (laughs) taking a step back further, when I look at my account, my accountant's telling me, girl, you can't be no entrepreneur because you don't have, (laughs) 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 because you don't have the funds. (laughs) Like... (laughs) Yep. But I had to take a step back. Um, and at the time, um, my husband, then boyfriend, well, I mean, we had so many different conversations just in the dating phase and then leading into marriage. But he's, I mean, you know, he's the person that I talked to. And of course, a close knit friends that I talked to. And they're like, you know, you don't need a lot of money to start a business bootstrap, figure out things that you can do for free, go to YouTube University research some things, um, see mm-hmm. if there's anybody that you can job shadow, see if there's anybody you can just reach out to for advice. Because as much as I thought that being an entrepreneur meant I needed to have X amount of dollars in order to do so, I also wasn't being very resourceful and using the tools that were already available to me. So mm-hmm. if you're in that stage of being like a startup entrepreneur, you're just doing some research and development during this time. Yes, there might be some things that you have to pay for here and there, but it should not be an exorbitant amount of, you know, funds being poured into that. If you don't already have the funds to pour into that, that makes sense. It does. And let me just say, because I really feel the need, we're going off on a tangent, but I think that it really does need to be said. And it's a big part of this conversation, right? Because there's no possible way to pay off this amount of money if we're out here buying everything that everybody's telling us to buy. Because in this space in particular, There's a lot of opinion, and I won't call it noise because there is validity to it, of course, around, you know, don't take the long path, like move quicker and pay for this coach or pay for this course or pay for this mastermind, so on and so forth. And I am Mm -hmm. not discrediting it because to some extent, if you can invest in certain things, it does make things go faster. But also we are real human beings. And to another extent, if you are in a situation like Nicole found herself wanting to take this huge step of paying off such an incredible amount of money, you have to make the decision for like yes. what's best for you. And Nicole, I just had like, you just like spoke yeah. to my spirit on that one because every day I see these posts about like, you know, do it faster and like pay for this. And I'm just like, yeah, but what if you want to be like Nicole and do like this amazing thing? We can't no, just be out here cannot. buying everything. I'm so glad you said that. I'm so glad you said that because there is value in investing. There's a value in investing in yourself and mm-hmm. your business and the people that you bring on to kind of help push you to that next level. In my situation, it was just, I needed to know where I needed to prioritize my life and the the things that I wanted to achieve. And at the time it was a career, but I also wanted entrepreneurship, but I also wanted to get out of debt, but I also wanted to manage my money well. So one of those things can't all happen (laughs) at the same time. Um, So, you know, just from sharing my personal story, I needed to figure out how can I manage money well, because there's no way I could be a nine to five entrepreneur if I didn't know how to manage my money to begin with, because there's no point in me being an entrepreneur. Even if I became that nine to five entrepreneur that I'm, that I am today at that time, I would not be able to manage my money. Well, I wouldn't be able to manage my business. Well, and if I was trying to onboard somebody at the time, it would have all failed because I didn't know how to manage the main thing, the main source, which is the income piece (laughs) personally. Mm Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. So now that you've said that, I'm curious for the people, what what would you want to share with them <laughs> around just like some of the biggest lessons that you've learned on this journey? Because this is an inc- this is truly, I can't say it enough, it is an incredible journey. So what are some of the lessons that you would want to share with people that you've learned? So let's see. There's a lot. There's a lot here. <laughs> I'm sure you wrote a book, so I'm sure. And there's a whole book about it. If you have not looked at the show notes or anything yet, um, I released a book, Unlearn, Ditch Failed Money Habits and Discover Financial Freedom. Um, But a few things that I want to pull out from that book that was 
really helped me through the challenges of paying off debt is, and you kind of alluded to this earlier where, you know, there's so many things online in terms of like, get this coach now, do it now, and you'll be able to see Mm -hmm. results tomorrow. Like we unfortunately are in a time where instant gratification is glorified. Um, And that's not always a great thing, especially if you don't have the right footing in a space and don't really understand like the whole landscape of what you're trying to get into. Um, So for me and my, my journey of paying off debt, um, consistency works. Consistency really worked in terms of um, making sure that yes, now I have this strict budget plan. I have to stick to it. I have to be consistent. I can't do it, you know, a couple weeks here, but then go splurge and hang out with girls and, you know, go out to brunches and buy these clothes from at the time Forever 21, (laughs) you know, just different things that I can't Mm -hmm. do. Like I have to be consistent if I actually want to see change in my money, in my finances, in my life. So that's one thing that I think is super important because, you know, again, this instant gratification can pretty much deter what you think about, you know, how results should be achieved and how quickly they should be achieved. If you remain consistent, um, I think they say habits are made within 21 days. Is that correct? I think it's 21 days. Um, yeah. You know, push yep. past the 21 days and continue that. If you, if your struggle is finances right. like me, it's going to take you more than 21 days to continue that <laughs> and learn that habit of <laughs> financial freedom. Um, and that's something that I really had to, you know, hold on to and be dedicated to because, if I had not, I wouldn't be able to have this conversation with you today. I wouldn't be able to say these things to you. And right. I wish, you know, looking back now, I had done this a lot sooner um, because it did take me seven years to pay off this, you know, this amount of money for my student loans. But you have stories where people have done this in one year, two years, uh, but they've done like much more aggressive timelines and debt sacrifices and a lot more discipline in different areas. Um, but consistency for sure has been one of the greatest, you know, learning lessons throughout this process. Um, the other item I would say is for me, I had to have a complete mindset shift, um, in terms of understanding how money operates, how I'm supposed to balance a budget. How am I supposed to pay my bills? You know, now I'm, I'm new in this career, I'm young, I'm in Atlanta, I have a great job, I have a great um, opportunities coming left and right in terms of entrepreneurship, you know, ideas that I'm sharing with other people. And when it came to money, I really had to shift my mindset because it, it literally was one of those things where finances wasn't just something that kind of hit me as I graduated college. It was something that was instilled in me, Mm -hmm. you know, growing up, like the different financial learning lessons that I had. And they weren't always, I wouldn't say they were always the best. They were just what I grew up learning because I grew up in a single family household. And there are certain things that you see and adopt growing up as a child um, in a household based on those who have raised you, basically. Um, And for me, I just know I had to change my mindset because we didn't learn you know, a lot of things about investing and what stocks are. We heard those words. We heard what saving is all about, but we didn't actually like learn. We didn't come to the table and have discussions about this is how you actually save. This is how you actually, you know, get into stock. This is how you look at what interest is. Like these things, you hear them growing up, at least in my household, but it wasn't something that was actually talked about and discussed together. It was more so... You can't get that because we have to pay these bills. Um, You can't, you know, Mm -hmm. we can't go on this vacation or do certain things because we need to pay for this. Like it was always like household necessities for sure, but it wasn't necessarily like a a family conversation at all times. And I think that might be a lot of people who grew up in, you know, single family household or just difficult household where you might have struggled growing up. So. Yeah, that was Absolutely. mindset shift, shift uh, for sure was definitely something that is important in, uh, for, throughout my journey. 
Yeah, it makes me think of like the whole idea of abundance and that abundance mentality, because it's kind of funny because, you know, I'm Enneagram 5, super analytical, research based. I'm not totally into the woo, but like there is real fact in the woo, right? Like I read enough to know that there is some very big reality and even in like Mm -hmm. the very woo, woo, woo. But that being said, I do know I use that word so many times just now. Jesus. But (laughs) I know in the woo, woo, woo. That's our next T-shirt, you guys. So if you want it, like comment on the podcast or just DM us and we will make that happen for everybody because that was a moment for sure. (laughs) But what it made me think about is that whole abundance mentality and how a lot of us really have to actively develop that since Mm -hmm. we didn't really grow up with it. And As you were talking, Nicole, I was even thinking about my own childhood because I think we were pretty similar in the fact that like we weren't having conversations about the stock market, but like I had heard of it. You know what I mean? But what struck me is that I, I remember I was always the kid, like my older sibling would borrow money from me. Like I was the kid who had a Mm -hmm. save it like, you know, like piggy bank, I guess, or whatever. But like, I was also a hustler. So my piggy bank would have like two, $300 in it. You know what I mean? It was like a good, I was, I I sold bracelets and cookies, my friend. So I was a real hustler. But the thing is, it always had that amount of money in it. Like I never spent money. And you started speaking about like interest and how like your money is actually supposed to flow and how you were learning all of those things in your adulthood. And it just reminded me that like I very much was the child who held on to money very tightly because to me, never spending anything and holding Mm. it close to the chest was safety and was security. And it's funny that as you were talking about that, I was just thinking about as an adult, how much unlearning I have to do for a seemingly healthy behavior, but like learning about things like Mm -hmm. investing and like what that really means and what that looks like and how, you know, in your primary checkings account, maybe it doesn't make sense to have a bunch of excess money. Like, why aren't you reallocating Mm, that somewhere? All of those things you don't think about. You really don't think about them because if you're not taught that or you don't sit around the table and have those frequent conversations, it's, it's foreign. It's literally foreign. Until you get adulthood and you're like, wait, what? (laughs) Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Okay. So I want you to like, I love how you're painting the picture for us and just describing your own personal experience. So I would love to hear just about what actually paying off that debt looked and felt like on a day-to-day basis. You mentioned being consistent. Uh, We mentioned as an entrepreneur, not throwing our money all around all of the time. But like, what else did that look like? Were there major sacrifices that were made? I would love to get a little more detail. Yes. If you consider no more happy hours a major sacrifice, then yes. That's what it was. (laughs) I mean... When you're in your early yeah. 20s, that can yeah. be quite the sacrifice. No, for sure. I'm just for saying. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I say that jokingly, but no, for some people that is a major sacrifice. Um, but no, so, mm-hmm. you know, during that time it was sacrificing. I mean, I did still hang out here and there and make sure I had the money for it, which where the budget kicked in. Um, but it was basically like right. realigning what's actually important. Um, do I really need that, you know, fifth suit? from H&M or some other store. No, I really don't need that that extra suit or some work clothes. Like I can I can make do with what I have. Like I really had to sit back and when mm-hmm. I really dove um, deep into my finances and really put everything on an expense report and just really dissected and analyzed where I was spending my money, it was in places that made literally no sense. And in my mind, I was complaining because I'm like, I'm not making enough money. I'm not, you know, getting these bonuses. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. And it really wasn't outside things that was hindering me from, you know, paying off my student loan debt or necessarily managing my money well it, or, or managing my money. It was just me. It was me. It was me and my spending habits and not really having a, a formal education on financial literacy literacy, and really understanding that, you know, if I made time to sit down and really look at these this budget sheet 
and look at the information and look at where I'm actually placing my money. It's in places that I really didn't need to spend my money. Um, and if I, you know, keep mm-hmm. saying I want to eventually be an entrepreneur or if I eventually want to save a certain amount of money in my account, I had to take a step back and look at myself and say, okay, the issue is not these other things that I'm spending my money on. It's me spending money on these things. (laughs) And I had to just take a moment (laughs) to understand that, okay, if sacrifice means I'm going to have a little bit less happy hours this this month, then that's what it's going to be. If it means I can't purchase coffee literally every single morning, because that was my thing buying coffee every day sometimes oh. twice a day but literally every Oof. morning then I needed to take a moment and be realistic about my money and at that time of course I'm looking at my money I'm looking at my budget um, I'm understanding where I'm really allocating my money and where the real problem is um, but then I had um, my husband at the time step in my, my boyfriend at the time now husband step in and kind of help me navigate some of these as well And, you know, he's questioned me on some of these things. And in some cases, if you're someone who is like me and I was just throwing money left and right, and someone then begins to start asking you about your finances, it almost feels like they're like prying into your business. And you're like, what do you mean? Why did I buy coffee every single day, every single day this week? Because I wanted to. And it's like, I wasn't knowledgeable and understanding that he's coming from a place of curiosity and understanding why I'm spending this money. And this is, this could be a family mm-hmm. member, a friend, a financial advisor, if that's who you choose to help you, you know, coach you and guide you dur- during this process. Um, but it feels like an attack when somebody is like going itemized and line by line of the, how you're spending your money. It just feels like, okay, are you saying I can't do these things because I'm an independent woman and I want to spend my money in these places. (laughs) (laughs) So it was taking a step back and going back to the point that I shared earlier, you know, just having that mindset shift. I had to literally unlearn what I thought I knew about money. And that wasn't a lot, actually, to be honest. (laughs) So I had to unlearn and Mm. basically understand how to break down what I thought I knew about finances and how to manage money and then build myself back up again by a lot of the steps that I just shared, you know, consistency and mindset shift and just different things, but also, you know, building myself back up in terms of how to, how to prioritize, how to reallocate my money, how to save more money. This episode is brought to you by Interact. Remember those BuzzFeed quizzes like, what type of ice cream are you? Yeah, Interact is a tool for creating quizzes just like those. Except it also acts as a way for your business to generate leads and build that oh-so-important email list. I use it to host my quiz, What's Your Enneagram Leadership Type? With hundreds of ready-made templates and the option to create unlimited quizzes from scratch, you will literally have hundreds of opportunities to attract the right clients, especially new ones. Don't miss out on this beautiful opportunity to grow your business in a fun and unique way. You can sign up for Interact today by heading on over to the show notes and getting a link to create your first quiz for free right now. That's right. I said it is free 99 to create your first quiz. It doesn't get much better than that. So you just mentioned like the impression that I got around how your boyfriend and then husband supported you on this journey. It did sound like he was like super supportive and at least out of curiosity, questioning some of your spending habits. And I'm wondering, like, did any other challenges or anything unique come up for you guys? Just because as another married woman, I know that money has everything to do with your <laughs> spouse. So I'm curious if anything else interesting came up during um, between- this journey. Within the relationship, you mean? Yeah. Uh huh. The relationship with him and the relationship with money. <laughs> so I think there is always a yin and yang in the relationship. <laughs> uh huh. And for me, my, you know, our yin and yang was spending habits. Like Greg was very much so the 
conservative when it comes to money. He was much more well, more well rounded. Uh. And for myself, I was the spender. And I was like, if I got it, I'm going to spend it. And if I don't have it, then I'll get it from somewhere else. Like I'm pulling from left and right. And in some cases, asking my <laughs> parents and moving my savings to my check-in mm-hmm. and then my check-in to my savings, you know, the whole shebang. Um, so it really was a, an, an eye opener. And, and I also speak on this in the book as well, in terms of money and relationships that you really have to get grounded. If this is somebody you want to spend the rest of your life with, and you guys are in this, you know, dating phase, but you know, it's getting serious or you are already serious and and married already. Like there, I have questions in here and tips in here to help you and guide you on things that um, we did And that was really have like a sit down and get grounded in understanding how does, how do you see money? How do you view money? Um, How do you view saving? How do you view generational wealth? Uh, What's important to you when it comes to retirement? You know, should we have a joint account? Should we have separate accounts? Like, and do we need to Mm -hmm. have weekly discussions or monthly discussions about money? So that was one of the things that we kicked in overdrive was every month we would have a sit down conversation and talk about our finances, what that looked like, how much did we spend? How much did we lose? What should we not have spent our money on this month? And what is our goal for the next month? Uh, And those conversations honestly are uncomfortable. For me, they were uncomfortable <laughs> because I was the one who was just <laughs> throwing money out the window. And it's it really mm-hmm. is a journey. It's truly a process. And this is whether you are having this conversation with the spouse or with yourself. It can be a very uncomfortable conversation talking about money if you're not so well, you know, if you're not so good with money. Because it's, really pri- um, it's really digging into your your thought patterns in terms of how you operate and it's really just trying to dissect okay if i want to achieve said goal when it comes to finances how can i do this what do i need to remove and having that conversation with a partner does help because you're able to actually understand one another when it comes to finances um have an open conversation if it gets you know a little heated take a step back take a breather and just come back to the table when it feels right, because it can, you know, it can be difficult. It can be challenging. But as long as you guys continue this back to the point of consistency, like I mentioned earlier, continue to do it, continue to work on each other, continue to build. Um, and then ultimately, you guys will see eye to eye. You guys will understand because it, it's literally not going to take one conversation to understand each other's, um, let alone relationship habits but also money habits. Yes. And can I just like validate to everybody listening right now? Like, I love that you bring in the whole relational dynamic to this conversation. And again, just to validate as someone who's been to my own share of marriage counseling before I got married, money is something that we Mm -hmm. talk about all the time. Oh my God. Like literally our pastor would not let us get married until we figured out how as a unit we were going to have these conversations. So I actually happen to love the fact that that became like an intrinsic part of how you talk about, you know, paying Mm -hmm. off this $80,000. Like, yes. Okay. So let's, we've talked a lot about challenges and like different things that you've had to work through and all of those things, but I want to go to something a little bit lighter and brighter, right? So can you share with us, like what has been, you could do one moment or a couple of moments, it's up to you, but what has been like one of your favorite moments of this debt paying Paying off the debt. (laughs) (laughs) I knew it. I asked anyways, but I was like, she just going to say she paid off it off. the <laughs> debt. Like, I already told you, girl, I'm so lit about paying off this debt. It's ridiculous. Those those balloons are uh-huh. literally going to stay up there the entire <laughs> year because they are just a constant reminder that I paid off my debt. <laughs> um, let yes. alone the, the, you know, the more income that's able to stay in my account, basically. But no, that, that, that right oh, there, yeah. to actually say the words and actually live the words and actually to see it in your account, mm-hmm. paying off that 80,000 or nearly $80,000 is just like unmatched. And it's, it's, it's everything, literally. 
I don't, I, there's, yes. it's such a milestone and it's something that once it's actually here if for me anyway, it's like, I still can't believe I did this. Like I did this, this happened. It's, it's past, it's right. in the past, <laughs> but literally paying off the debt. I totally understand that. And as you're saying this, I like I was trying to imagine what those milestones felt like. So I am going to ask you about that because like I can imagine for me, I don't know, like something about, ooh, we're down to 70,000 would probably feel like Mm -hmm. a big deal. But then I would still be like, dang, there's Mm -hmm. so much to go. So (laughs) what did those milestones feel like? Like, were you always excited when you got (laughs) to a big milestone? Did you ever just feel like this is never going to end? Like, what was that like? At the beginning, <laughs> it was not fun. Uh-huh. It was Be not. Honest. <laughs> it was not sexy at all. Not at all. Not even a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, it was great to see some of those. Um, I can't even think of the term, but you know how they have different sections in your loan. You're like section A is worth five thousand dollars. Section B is ten thousand. I can't even think of the term, mm. the correct term. But to see those go away, and I'm like, oh, okay, now I'm down to like seven more sections to pay off. Um, that was, that was <laughs> Yay. okay. That was fun. Those are little milestones, but it wasn't until it got closer to like, I'm down to like two, three years. I want to say three years, but I'm like, Oh my God, mm-hmm. this could happen. This is actually happening. That's what I really got <laughs> excited about it. And just thinking about, okay, if I do this with my money, if I cut back here, or if I even get a new job, if I increase my salary here, and if I do a certification here, I'll be able to bump up to this amount and be able to pay off more to this. And now I can chop off the months to this and pay this in two and a half years. Okay, I can do that. So like being able to navigate as I got closer and understand, okay, now I'm going to make my money work for me in terms of a career so it can help me in the long run and we're really the short term for paying off the student loan. Um, so those type of milestones really came into overdrive as I got closer and closer um, to paying off um, that debt. And so when it got down to like a year, I'm like, oh my God, this is literally, it's literally happening. This is... <laughs> Oh, and we know a year goes by yes. so fast. Yes. So. I mean, at the snap of a <laughs> finger, you're already into next year. So uh-huh. that's when it really started to get exciting. I- Oh, yeah. I'm confused how it's we're recording this in June and I'm so confused how it's the middle of June right now. I'm like, when did that happen? I thought it was January still. <laughs> Anyways, <That's so laughs> just putting that funny. out there. That's that just so me, funny. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so, uh, yeah. so that, OK, yeah. so those were the big milestones, you know, paying off debt and then basically seeing that timeline, you know, mm-hmm. dwindle down. Um, but ultimately, what really is exciting is that I had a plan. I had a plan to begin with. Um, it was a little rocky at first back in, back in the day, I want to say 2013 is like when the real plan started, but to see that plan actually like begin to chisel off, you know, month by month and then year over year. is when it really got exciting. And, you know, of course, down to the one year mark, I'm like, okay, this is happening guys. (laughs) This is happening. Oh yeah. For for those who forgot from the beginning, Nicole happens to be a project manager, so planning <laughs> is literally her expertise. <laughs> I just had to throw that in there. I feel like that is a superpower, you know, so like, I yes. shared. <laughs> just in case y'all forgot, I know we mentioned it twice at the beginning, but she's a yeah, brain. yeah. No, I'm a I, uh-huh. my brain always thinks in terms of like a plan, which is you know crazy to think about in in terms of like where I started with finances. I literally had no plan. But what's Mm -hmm. crazy is I work with projects every day, helping them plan and stay under budget for their projects. And I can nail it. I can nail other people's projects, but I couldn't nail my own. (laughs) And here I am finally being able to do that. Nailed it. Nailed it. Whoop, whoop. Oh, yeah. Heck, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Okay. First of all, I'm like over here looking at my student debt. I happen to be one of those. I just finished my master's not that long ago, but they are Mm. knocking on my door. You know what I'm saying? So my journey is actually just beginning and I feel re-energized. I'm like, oh, yeah, Tiana. (laughs) 
So I happen to know that like Nicole's book going to be on my shelf as motivation. Okay. (laughs) So (laughs) since this is the second time I brought it up because the first time it was kind of a spoiler because I got too excited, but I want you to tell us all about your book because I happen to be one of your biggest fans and I want the Tipod world to know about it. (laughs) Awesome. Awesome. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. But yes, so all the things that I've just shared are in a book. I did a thing. I wrote a book about all the things that I just talked about, plus some. Um, I really started the writing process back in December of last year. And I'm like, okay, I know this is going to like, I need to put all my thoughts, all my entire process, my actual plan that I used in 2013 inside the book. Like I have all these things inside the book where I'm basically sharing my whole life, basically. It's really like a tell-all of my life and the just bad financial habits that I picked up along the way and literally had to unlearn. Um, And again, I I mentioned it earlier, but the title of the book is Unlearn, Ditch Failed Money Habits and Discover Financial Freedom. And really just describing me breaking down and unlearning everything that um, I knew at the time and building myself back up and learning and actually gaining financial literacy, understanding how to manage and balance money, um, and what that meant not only for my everyday spending, but also how to pay off um, $80,000 in student loan debt. So I have so much to share um, inside this book because it's a journey. It's really a journey. And, you know, one of those things that, you know, in no matter where you are, I think everybody has some sort of financial struggle here and there. And it was just one of those things that I felt like I was, I felt like I was, you know, excelling professionally in terms of, you know, my career and I'm doing all these great things, but I was failing financially in silence. And I try to put that in this book because if anyone can relate to, you know, some of the things that we talked about earlier or the statement that I just made where, you know, you're just killing it in the game. You're doing great. Um, Everybody else thinks you're amazing and you're awesome, but there's this little secret that you really can't manage your money that well (laughs) and that you're really struggling behind the scenes. And when when you look at your bank account, then I definitely believe this book is for you. Um, If you are struggling financially and you're just trying to find a way to, you know, get better. If you're trying to eliminate debt, whether that is just credit card debt or student loan debt. Um, And if you just need a tool to help you through that process, again, I put the template that I use from 2013 to this point today to help me and navigate my own personal finances and get where I am today. So it's really a personal journey. I am in no form a financial advisor. (laughs) So (laughs) don't, you know, you know, get me for that. But I am just basically sharing my personal story because I know if I was struggling and having these issues, that my story is not just my story. This is other people's story as well. So I wanted to share that and allow other people to gain and be able to say the same words that I'm debt free and be excited about it. And, you know, you can pick up the book on my website. It's available now. Yes. And, you know, I got to come in here with my own endorsement. But let me just say, sometimes the best people to learn from are the people who have been through it themselves. And Nicole has such a peaceful and just like, I just find her like soothing in your demeanor and the way you speak. But let's be clear, the woman paid off $80,000 in debt. We're not talking about, you know, 10000 We're talking <laughs> $80,000. So this is something to get excited about. And I'm just going to insert myself into this conversation to say, yes, sometimes like even if it's for motivation or actual direction, like she said, she put in the tools and resources for you. But sometimes like If you vibed with Nicole like I do, I'm just saying (laughs) it's really good to get the perspective of someone who's recently gone through it. So, Nicole, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for jumping on and just sharing your story, at least a little piece of your story, because we know there's (laughs) a whole book to back it up. But (laughs) we just wanted to say thank you so much for joining us. Before we wrap up, please, please, please give us uh, like your social, all the places we can find you. So you can find me on Instagram at mediocre to masterful 
Um, you can also check out the website, mediocre to masterful.com, which is where you can purchase the book for pre-order and it will be available on Amazon pretty soon. There'll be an announcement about that. Um, but yeah, definitely check out mediocre to masterful.com. Um, all the links to social is also on that site as well. Um, and then if you are in on IG and you want to follow me personally, I am at Mrs. MRS underscore Nicole Jones underscore. Beautiful. Well, thank you again for joining us. This was really, yes, really good. Thank you. I really appreciate it. And I'm so excited for the many, many things that you have to come for your audience and you know, for Tide Pod and just all the things that you have coming up for your business. So thank you again for having me on the show.